Hi, everyone. I'm Rui, and welcome to another show of Music Success. I'm your host, and I'm excited to bring another guest. Um, he is originally from Manchester. He's a singer-songwriter and uh, an artist who's been based in New York for the past 10 years. He's been in the studio with three producers uh, in the New York area, Ron Geffen, Mike Hewitt, and Justin Mayo, and has been releasing music for about seven years now. His sound spans from pop rock Athens to soulful R&B ballads. His sound and lyrics are inspired by artists like Pink, George Michael, John Legend, Demi Lovato, Lady Gaga, Usher, and Sam Smith. You can stream or download his music on all music platforms. Welcome to the show, Adam Soret. How are you? Thank you for having me. This is a great time to... Uh to be on and, and to promote and to talk with another artist about what's going on in the world and how we're fitting our art inside of it. <laughs> awesome. And uh, you're in New York right now. You want to tell us a little bit, the rest of the world, what's happening with the New York scene and uh, the music industry? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm based in Astoria, Queens at the moment. Um, and honestly, the art is thriving here. We have a lot of great um, LGBTQ venues, queer bars that are hosting lots of shows and, you know, sort of experimenting with new artists and trying to get the uh, the local clientele to come in and see what we're all about. There's so much going on with writing and new works. Um, and then on the theater side of things, there's, you know, Broadway still going, uh, you know, with a lot of bumps along the way. You know, there's, of course, the new strand of the virus still lingering around. But as, as we all hope, we'll go into a nice, fruitful spring and uh, things will start to liven up and the virus will calm down, we hope, right? Fingers crossed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll hope for the best. And uh, now, how did you start any music? What, what led you to, to choose this type of career? Which is not an sure. easy choice, right? Not at all, not at all. But you know, it, it, the payoff is so wonderful, Rui, because you get to speak your own, your own truth. And you know, I come from a, a musical theater background a lot of that life is just regurgitating material and finding yourself within it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I'm going to be quite frank, I kind of lost myself in that and I wanted to find myself again. So I started writing my own, my own emotions and my own experiment and experiences. And that led me to really finding myself as an artist. So writing new songs, writing my experiences was definitely where my road needed to go. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, what's your process? Can you explain a little bit? Uh, different artists and musicians have different ways to come about and create. Well, what's yours? Well, what do you do? To, sure. You know, sure. To so with my first album, um, it took a long time to write because I didn't really realize I was writing for an album's sake. I was just writing, you know, as a as a as a writer. So um, with without the the whole arc of the the theme of the album in mind, I was just writing my day to day life. Um, the music side of my brain is constantly writing jingles and hooks and um, loopy sort of vocal layers. And um, so that's always bumbling in one side of my brain. The other side of my brain was just trying to get out how I was feeling. So you put those two together and all of a sudden I realized I had some songs under my belt, you know. Uh, and of course, uh, back in college, I was in musical theater and I would always arrange sort of my own versions of acapella songs and I wrote for other groups. Um, so the music arranger side of me was always going. Um, mm -hmm. But once I finally realized I had a lot to say, I started structuring my, my lyrics into my own pop songs. That's great, man. Okay. And you, you worked uh, with uh, very important uh, producers. What did you learn from working with those people and how did you manage to get those connections? Sure. Yeah, I have a really good friend of mine, Lindsay, Lindsay Benjamin. She's another indie artist um, and she more or less convinced me to to meet these producers and and to get into the studio with my original music. And it was kind of overwhelming to to take on that process when you haven't done it before. So I'm very thankful for her and her guidance. And, you know, the, everyone has a different style and I'm learning as I work with more producers, how everyone works, you know whether it's, you know, result oriented versus the process versus, you know, getting the, the sort of pop song sound out of something versus just being true to your indie artist self and the writing, you know, some producers want to stay true to your original intention and some producers are like, let's blow this up, you know? 
So it's yeah. very interesting to see how how they work and how you fit into that. So I'm learning a lot as I as I meet new producers. Uh, now you have a new album. Um, it, ha has it been released, or are you working on it, or is this ready? I'm working on it. I'm working on it now. As you know, it takes a lot of time and money to get into the studio. So I am I'm building it uh, via a Kickstarter campaign. And that's allowing me to fund my album. And I'm excited to work with new producers as well as the ones that I've worked with before. So it's a good combination of what I know and, and some unknown. So we'll see where it goes. But I have a really good feeling about it. And the songs are definitely another level. Um, and the writing in this album is definitely more positive versus me working through all the trauma from before. So this is an, an album of affirmation, which is why I titled it Affirmation. Awesome. And uh, you, you also involved with the monthly um, songwriter showcase. Can you explain for the people who don't know what that is? How does it work and how did you get involved with it? We have a local bar here in Astoria called Albatross. Mm -hmm. um, it's an LGBTQ plus queer bar and they were hiring karaoke hosts this summer. So we, they were rotating hosts and trying us out every Monday. And I made my name with that there and kind of got my foot in the door. Um, and then, you know, they were starting to figure out some other nights to bring in uh, people, you know, they have trivia nights and things. And I really had this passionate idea about starting a singer songwriter showcase that allowed me to bring in local artists to showcase, you know, a little set of their own music while I hosted along the way and kind of sprinkled in my music um, throughout the night. And I've done three now and they're, they're starting to get bigger and more structured and more professional. And I'm starting to network more with, you know, various levels of indie artists. So it's, it's really exciting. I hope to take it to more venues. Yes. And uh, for, from my research on you, you are a multifaceted artist. I mean, you, you hold a lot of hats. How did you learn all, the, all these aspects of your artistic vein, let's say? Yeah, uh, well, I would say it started with my sister. Uh, she was she's six and a half years older than myself, and she was always involved with dance and choir and theater and all these things that I aspired to. So I took them on naturally as someone who was just curious to learn. Um, and I also had a lot of energy. So I wanted to dance. I wanted to do gymnastics. I wanted to sing. I wanted to perform. I used to set up little backyard performances uh, with my cousin, and I used to make everyone dance with me, even if they didn't want to. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. And then I went to school for theater, you know, after, after taking on like 25 productions or so in high school, um, at various levels mm -hmm. and choir at the same time, I just completely dove into music and theater and, you know, you have to hone a lot of skills in that setting. And I think I, that just carried on with me throughout my adult life and through college and, you know, with training for it, you meet and learn a lot of techniques. You mean a lot of people who've been in the business. And yeah, I just took my toolbox with me as I moved to the city. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned before uh, to me before the interview, like you have to manage, which it's a common thing with a lot of musicians and the people that work in the music industry where they have to manage their life, their, their, their support life and their artistic life. Can you explain to us how you manage to do that and what strateg strategies do you use to you know, keep things balanced so you keep creating? It's a very difficult thing to balance out survival jobs, as we say, versus our creative lives. And, you know, one of the, one thing I'm learning is everything's a business. And, you know, because I tend to work from passion, which is great, but you can't put passion into everything you do all the time because it'll exhaust you. Mm -hmm. um, but I work a lot in hospitality and events. Um, I work in nightlife, of course, it's that, that I'd say is more towards the strategy side of what I'm trying to do, right? Build a brand network, uh, express myself, showcase my music, that, that side of things is allowing me to kind of blend the survival mm -hmm. and the, the creative path that I'm on. So that's excellent. And I'm just starting to really grasp onto that. Um, but the, as far as the other work goes and hospitality, and it's very draining, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's hard to to maintain a work-life balance with all of that, especially with the hours. Yeah. Um, but we all learn and there's various paths that you can take as an artist here in New York City to, to be able to support your, your goals. So awesome. I'm learning the strategy side of things and the business side of things more and more every day. 
Yeah, exactly. Now, what has been the best advice you ever received in the music industry? The best advice for the music industry specifically is okay. to never stop, never stop hustling, even if you feel defeated or if you feel like you're not, you know, it's so easy to compare day to day with all these influencers and follower, you know, musicians who have lots of followers, artists that are signed to labels, you know, it's very easy to compare and to feel like you're not doing your best, but just keep going and things will progress. And your biggest challenge? Probably finances, the business side of things, getting in the studio more often, you know, all of that is very, it's the challenge. As an artist, you're writing, you want to get in the studio when you're ready to, to record something. Um, and you don't want to have to wait, you know, six months or whatever to, to release something that is really on your, on your mind or on your heart. Mm -hmm. And in terms of when you started, because you, you, you're very young, when you started uh, in the in the music business, in the music industry, uh, compared to today, what, what's your viewpoint on the industry in general? It's ever changing. Mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot about finding your community, building yourself within that community, and finding your place within that community versus the giant monster that is the entertainment industry right um that i think i'm starting to realize that like as soon as you can build a following in a smaller setting mm -hmm. that's going to take on a bigger life and it's okay to be where you're at and do you feel you have uh some breakthrough moments uh so far is there something like you know you felt like that was a breakthrough something you learned I'm from i feel like the breakthrough i'm learning from right now is that the networking is naturally happening um, because I'm putting myself out there more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not overly trying to curate what, what I'm doing. I'm just trying to put myself out there more often. And that's allowing things to come in, connections with DJs, producers, other artists, musicians. Um, for instance, I'm trying to find a band that I can gig with. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult when you when you have a bunch of solo artists that you're trying to figure out, you know, who wants to work with you and who wants to give their time over to your music when they're working on their own agenda and their own process and their own music. Um, so I'm learning, learning how to, how to build a network with other musicians starting to just happen. Okay. That's fantastic. Now, do you feel that you, um, uh, you know, like the, the music business, there are musicians who don't want to deal with it, but, in today's in industry, that's that's impossible, right? You have to learn uh, the basic tools and how to promote yourself, marketing, or at least you have somebody that is helping you out, right? Is there somebody that you kind of like consider to be your role model where you're trying to emulate the business model in order to achieve your goals in music? I do all of my own marketing and, and advertising and video editing. Uh, at the moment. So I'm, it's definitely overwhelming to take that all on, but it has to happen. It's necessary. Um, there are artists like Todrick Hall who have made themselves, you know, a name out of YouTube videos and, you know, shows like American Idol there. He's, he's made a big name for himself and now his platform is huge. So he's someone who I've definitely emulated along the way and seen his process, you know, grow and his production value grow and his followers grow. And, um, but there, I mean, there are, there are a ton of artists that are doing their thing and I, I definitely aspire to, um, pink is my number one inspiration for sure. Awesome. So I love pink as well. Yeah. What, what's your favorite music tool that you like to use? Instrument. Whatever that is. Could be software. Uh -huh. instruments, could be. Uh, so I, you know. I'm trying to learn logic here, but I'm I'm still on my garage band level of things because I'm not my own producer. So as long as I can create my demos, I have my mic here, my monitors, my interface, my DAWs all set up here. But yeah, I'm very beginner level engineer. <laughs> oh, and, uh, favorite album? What's your favorite album? Of all time? Yeah. Ooh, that's hard. I don't even know if I've really chosen a favorite album. Honestly, I pull from so many different sounds, so that's a very difficult question. Um, 
I do love Pink's albums and probably my favorite of hers that got me through a lot of times was Fun House. That was a good album. Her recent last two albums were great as well. You know, something about her is that she's always duetting. She's always finding new artists and new producers to duet with. She's always, you know, one song has a totally different sound from another. And, you know, it's just kind of the opposite of what we kind of strive for. We kind of strive for like a an overall sound and theme of an album, right? Um, but I like the breaking the mold and having a giant pop anthem and then like a really singer-songwriter ballad and then, you know, maybe a bluesy duet and then like a, a folky so you know, so I like I like I guess that's probably why I don't have a favorite album because I mean Michael Jackson, of course, amazing all of his music. Um, but I also always love big band sounds too, like Jersey Boys and I don't know. There's I definitely connect most with female artists mm-hmm. and uh and R and B. Um I love Tori Kelly. Mm-hmm. George Michael's a huge inspiration. He's definitely his spirit lives inside me. Um, and the voice, but, I, I noticed you 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 have similarities to him as well. The way he sings, I love George Michael. Yeah, and you know, someone like George Michael, I can't imagine trying to carry the coattails of the LGBTQ community at a time where the world wasn't accepting and AIDS was raging, and you know, it's just it was. I I feel so lucky to be alive in 2022 at a time where we've made such progress with that whole thing. So yeah, that that's very good. Now you um as an example, right? Um if you were starting today in the music industry, uh with only your talent, your skills, knowledge, and experience, what would you do differently today that you did when you started? Asked for help more. I thought I had to do everything myself. So I was very like shut into my room, you know, creating my demos. No one talked to me. I have something to say, but now I'm realizing you can't do it all. And it's less stressful once you invite people in and you collaborate and you, you, you accept more knowledge. You know, we live in a world where we think we have to be the best at everything. <laughs> so I'm learning. You don't, you don't have to be where you're at is fine. And you can meet people who have skill sets that go beyond your own. And it's called collaborating it's called growth it's that's probably the biggest thing collaboration yeah that's that's a pretty good advice now adam what is music success for you music success to me would be creating art and music and distributing it at the same time that you're living through your lyrics and your music so that would be the goal to me You know, if I can write an album and produce it at the same time, that's music success to me. You're getting out, you're expressing yourself, and you're you're releasing it to the masses interchangeably. Adam, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for your time. It's really appreciated. What's the best way people can actually connect with you and follow you and listen to your music? They can follow me at Adam Surrett, A-D-A-M. S-A-R-E-T-T-E music at Instagram. And my website is adamsurrett.com. And all of my music is streaming on all platforms under Adam Surrett. Awesome. I would like to remind all the listeners and the viewers that you can find all the links to all these resources and everything else we've been chatting about in today's episode by going to musicsuccess.com and enter the guest's name in the search bar. And this episode with all the show notes will pop right up. Thank you so much for being generous with your time. It was really a, a pleasure to have you here. And I wish you uh, a lot of success and uh, congratulations on the new album that is coming out. And I hope Thank to you. have you back in the show when the album is out and uh, tell us how is it going. Okay? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, Evan. Uh, okay. And remember, people, uh, we want you to be successful because your success is really our success. And don't forget to live your dreams until the next time, until the next episode. Stay safe and take care. See you then. Bye.